Hey, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, then my name is Erica, and today I'm going to be talking a bit about Netflix recent documentary, What I Hot, which is about Abercrombie and Fitch and its problematic past, which talked about racism and it also talked about some hom homophobia and fat phobia. But one of the things the documentary. Hi, Bambi! And that's my cat. He walked away. Sorry. My cat's never gonna be on the video. Come on, Bambi! He doesn't want to make a cameo. I would like. I would love it if he did that. But I doubt he'll ever make a cameo because he's shot. So this is my cat. Bam Bam, he's making a little cameo appearance. He's a sweetheart. Ow, he just hit me with his ears. What are you doing, Bambi? He's so cute, right? Please admire Bambi. <laughs> he's like, where am I? What am I doing here? I had to go in my room because he won't go in like no, no living room. He's scared of my dogs. But he's a honeydew. He's a honeydew melon. And he does love to hang out in my room with me. He's a good boy. You can't see him right now because he went out of frame. And now he's jumping down and rubbing my legs. So yeah, I just wanted to show you my cat. But anyway, the the documentary, which was like an hour, an hour and a half long, and I suffered through the whole thing. Not once did they mention disability, ableism, able-bodied, or any of that. Which, if you don't know, Abercrombie has a history of ableism and being ableist, which is not surprising since it's very much into creating a norm and creating cool kids and separating people by who's cool and who's not. Like, that's not shocking that that kind of mindset would breed ableism or ableism would breed that kind of a, a mindset but of course Netflix loves to erase disabled people so now we're gonna get into the sponsor of this video Netflix yeah yeah right as if Netflix would ever sponsor I don't think Netflix would even sponsor youtubers but if they did, they would definitely not sponsor me because I'm spending a whole video talking shit about them. I'm not talking shit about them, but I'm talking shit about their documentary and how it erases disabled people. So for this video, I am going to be reading a bit, but I will have the... Hi, baby! I will have the, the excerpts popped up on the screen so you could read along or you can click the links in the description if you would rather read along there because I do realize I can be a bit hard to understand especially when I am reading aloud for some reason. Don't know why but I am hard to understand then but so I'm gonna pull up some articles that I have found on the interwebs. <laughs> I'm so awkward. Yeah. Okay. So this article one second while they make me sign into Messenger because I messaged these articles to myself. The first article I am going to be reading from is an article from The Guardian. Love or hate The Guardian, it's from The Guardian. So, and this article is called Disabled Student Sues 
Crombie and Fitch for discrimination. And I love how they have a little disclaimer that says this article is more than 12 years old. I realize it's not a super recent article because this happened a while back, but it's still worth talking about. Okay. So it's written by someone named Helen Pidd, and it was published on the 24th of June, 2009, and it said, Clothing retailer Abercrombie and Fitch has been accused of hiding a sales assistant in a stockroom at a London outlet because her prosthetic arm didn't fit with its look policy. A a a tribunal has heard Ryan Ryan Dunn. I'm sorry, I do not know how to pronounce that name. It might be like Reeve because I know the name Eve is spelled similarly, but yeah. A a 22-year-old law student from Greenford, West London, claims she was removed from the shop floor at the company's Savile Row. Is that named after Jimmy Savile, which Netflix also made a documentary? I don't know. Let's stop rambling today, Erica. Branch when management became aware of her disability. Dean, who was born with her left or without her left forearm, and my cat is so cute, and has worn a a prosthetic limb since she was three months old, is is suing for disability discrimination after she was left personally diminished and humiliated when she refused to remove her cardigan at work last summer. I, I, I had been bullied out of my job, she said. It, it was the lowest point I've ever been in my life. Okay, and then it talks about how she went and sued the company. I'm not going to read the whole article if he would like to. The link will be in the description below. But maybe, like if I give Netflix the benefit of the doubt, maybe they didn't include that part because this woman was from London and I mean the documentary focused a lot on the U.S. But wait, there's more. I'm not very good at like adding suspense. Maybe I'll work on that. Okay. And this next article I'm I'm about to pull up is by a place called Gender Across Borders, which describes itself as a global feminist blog. And the title of the article is, let me read this one second, and just in case you who didn't have enough reasons to avoid Abercrombie and Fitch. I love those petty titles. And it is written by somebody named uh, Elizabeth Kate Switaj. Hopefully, I said that right. And I'm uh, I'm blowing it up because on the screen it is very tiny, so I need to be able to read it. So I'm scrolling down. So it talks about the history with the lawsuit with the woman I described earlier in the other article. And then it said, it turns out this was not an isolated incident of ableism in Abercrombie and Fitch. Minnesota Public Radio reports that an administrative law judge has imposed a... $15,200 
$64 fine on the retailer after employees at the Mall of America refused to allow the 17-year-old sister of an autistic girl to accompany her in the dressing room. They persisted in the refusal. In this refusal, despite the sister informing them of the girl's disability and the girl's mother speaking with hit them at length about the situation. Boy, is that fucked up. They claimed that though there is a policy of allowing more than one person into a dressing room in cases of disability, they could not follow that policy unless the disability was visible. What? Okay. It, it is, of course, ridiculous for we he tell employees who have seen someone for just a few minutes to set themselves up as competent judges of somebody's ability, which I agree with. And then... It says, what this is really about, however, was maintaining the normativity of the Abercrombie image. The 14-year-old was denied the exception she needed, said, I am a misfit at Abercrombie. That's very sad. And I will say that having grown up in the early 2000s, I can relate to that. I did shop at Abercrombie and Hollister, and I pretended I liked it. But you know what? Those stores were sensory overload city. The music was blaring, the lights, like you couldn't actually see the clothing because it was so dark in there. They sprayed so much cologne you could barely breathe. Like. I have a Crombie and Hollister were not the most friendly towards neurodivergent people because a lot of us deal with sensory overload and it was just too much. So I can relate to that and I don't think anybody should be, should be made to feel like a misfit. And now I'm going to read my third little article here and... It is, it is loading. That's what it is. Um, it is by Barnes and the Hornberg, which is like a law website that focuses a lot on racial justice, at least from what I can gather. And the article is called Or E-E-O-C-V, Abercrombie and Fitch. Why no disability accommodation angle? Now, this is up to my speed because I thought about way about the documentary. Why not talk about disability accommodation? And I believe this is going to, this is about like, they had a racial discrimination lawsuit against Abercrombie and Fitch, which was talked about at length in the documentary. So if you'd like to know more about that, I would suggest watching the documentary, even though I'm also putting the documentary on blast. And, and this article is written by somebody named William A. Nolan, who is a partner of this law firm, I guess. And I'm so it says has Janine Gazdecki posted here. The U.S. Supreme Court recently heard oral argument in the case involving the scope of an employer's obligation, if any to uh, initiate religious accommodation discussions with an applicant who is wearing clothing that would violate uh, the company's apparel policy, but that would be, but that would seem to be being worn for religious purposes. The Federal Court of Appeals that heard the case seemed to say the company had no affirmative obligation 
it had not discriminated. So th this is actually speaking about there was a woman in the documentary that was wearing a headscarf for re religious reasons and she applied to an Abercrombie store and it f from what it sounds like she was discriminated against because of her religion and because she was wearing the headscarf. Uh, I haven't came up with some BES excuse that, well, we have a policy that you can't wear black and the headscarf was black. I highly doubt that. He, he didn't want her working there because she didn't fit your uh, aesthetic, which is thin white, able-bodied cisgender people that are conventionally uh, attractive what let's be real here because also in the documentary they noted that Abercrombie started to call their employees models so that they were legally allowed to discriminate against people because if you're looking for models you're usually looking for people that fit a certain a certain whatever you're looking for for what you're modeling is, is you're legally allowed to d discriminate. I still think that's BS, but anyway, that's the law. And then it says here, uh oh, I accidentally X'd out. And now it says, One of the things that surprised me about the argument and the cover and the coverage of the case generally is that there is no discussion of it and how the well developed body of law regarding when an employee's disability accommodation obligations are triggered might apply. When, and I speak on disability discrimination issues, I usually ask the audience with respect to one other, the, to what other, and that is in addition to disability f form of discrimination, does the employer have an accommodation obligation in addition to the usual discrimination law obligation not to take adverse action because of the legally protected characteristic. So this is saying we should use the same logic that we used in disability law with accommodation to accommodate people for different things like religion or culture or any type of thing like that, which I think is a, a valid point. But I also think there's something to be said that uh, Abercrombie also discriminates against disabled people, or at least they did in the past. So why am I bringing this up? Well, I kind of already said why, because that documentary didn't cover it, so I'm like, you know what, I will, while wearing my Judy Human shirt, because I am a disability icon. <laughs> I'm kind of being sarcastic there. I don't know. I'm in a sassy mood once again. Lately, I've been in a sassy mood. Don't know why. But anyway, I think it's trash that a documentary would cover all of this stuff and be very long and seem well put together. But they didn't once acknowledge that the store was also ableist and as somebody who talks a lot about social issues and particularly ableism of course I'm going to talk about that and nobody can really stop me from doing that so have a crown be please don't sue who me everything in this video is alleged based on what I have read and what I've heard and what I saw in that documentary so yeah I think a lot of times 
ableism and disability discrimination and issues get swept un under the rug because disability makes a lot of people uncomfortable. It's like the only form of marginalization that you can enter at any point in your life. Like it's not it's not a set in stone thing. A anybody can become disabled at any time if you get into a car accident or if you have an autoimmune disorder or like anything can happen where you, you can become disabled. So I think that's definitely one of the reasons why people hate talking about disability. But Netflix Please do better if you need a disability consultant to talk about disability issues. Please contact me, shameless plug. I would love to work in the entertainment industry. So yes, and that is the end of this video. If you learned something or if you found it interesting, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you have not already and you would like to see more of my content, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Bye.